Hello, my name is Christina. I love to salvage, repurpose, and create and help others to do the same. Today, we are talking about what can you do with an old cabinet door. I don't know about you, but I see these on the side of the road all the time. In fact, usually attached to some old cabinets. So much so that I've been carrying my electric drill in the car with me so I can remove these anytime I see them. There are so many great projects. I have three of them for you today. So stay tuned to the end for the big reveal of all the projects. And maybe by the end of this, you'll be putting your drill in the car too. Step one is find some cabinet doors. You'll find them painted or sometimes natural wood. Either is fine. I'll show you how to deal with both. The next step is to remove the hardware. And a lot of times I save the hardware in case I need it for future projects. Usually the grossest part of the whole cabinet is under the hardware. So be forewarned. I'm planning on painting most of these doors with DIY paint, which is no prep, but with cabinet doors, cleaning is a must. They are really grimy, greasy, and gross. Make sure to at least wipe them down with a Lysol wipe or scrub them really good with Dawn dish soap and water to make sure you don't have any bleed through. The all wood kitchen door was really disgusting. It was black on parts and really needed a good scrubbing with Dawn dish soap and water. The next step is to fill in all of the holes from the hardware with a little lightweight speckle. Don't forget to fill in the holes on both sides of the cabinet door. Then, once dry, sand. For the first door, I'm going to use salt wash. Salt wash is an all-natural paint additive that makes anything new look old and chippy. For this project, I'm using DIY paint and faded burlap. DIY paint is a no VOC, all natural clay based paint and one of my favorites. To learn more about using DIY paint, click on the link above. When using DIY paint and salt wash together, you mix them equally in a 50-50 ratio and mix it till it's the consistency of a thick icing. When using salt wash, a disposable brush is best. I usually use a chip brush, but a foam brush is all I had. You're gonna apply this very thick and almost kind of pounce it to get peaks. The more peaks that you create, the more texture and really cool chippiness you will be able to achieve. Salt wash will also cover up that pretty horrible paint job from the previous owners. Then allow your salt wash to dry. This takes a while, maybe even overnight, depending on how thickly you apply it. Since I was waiting for salt wash to dry, I started another door. This door I decided I was going to turn into a chalkboard. Did you know that any color DIY paint can make a chalkboard? Yep, all you do is apply two coats on a flat surface and then do not seal it and you will have a chalkboard. And there's also one important tip I will show you at the end to prepare your chalkboard before you use it. Then I painted the edges with DIY paint in Mermaid Tail. I love to watch DIY paint dry. It always lightens as it dries. Now for the fun part. I decided I was going to do a blended paint finish all over the edges of my chalkboard. I chose Mermaid Tail, Old 57, and Mint Chip from DIY Paint. To learn more about creating a blended paint finish, click on the link to the video above. Then I applied another coat of Little Black Dress and used an artist brush to touch up the edges. 
More paint had to dry, so it was time to work on the next door. I'm once again applying Little Black Dress from DIY Paint just to the inside of this door. Using the same brush, I'm now applying DIY Paint in Salty Kiss to the edges, and I'm going to blend through a little bit of the Little Black Dress using my DIY Paint Blending Brush. Sometimes on smaller objects you can get away with only one coat, but as you can tell, I'm going to need two, especially because the color underneath was such a bright red. Now time to add a stencil. For this project, I'm using a JRV stencil, Fresh Cut Flowers. JRV stencils are five times thicker than any other stencil which means they can be reused over and over again. The whole stencil won't fit, so I taped off the section I wanted to use. I'm using DIY paint in White Swan. I felt it still needed a little something else, so I decided I would also use the JRV stencil flower garden and add just a few flowers. The hardest part was picking which flowers. Next step was to use my orbital sander and some 220 grit paper for some light distressing. Since the salt wash was still drying, I decided it was time to wax. On both of the picture frames, I'm using DIY clear wax and I'm applying it with a wax brush. When you apply wax to DIY paint, it will darken. Don't freak out, it will lighten as it dries. I also added a little bit of dark wax over the top just to darken it a bit. The salt wash was finally dry. Now it was time to apply Little Black Dress DIY paint over the whole piece. and let it dry. Once it was dry, it was time to sand again with 220 grit sandpaper. This is when the magic happens with salt wash. I love the look of years and years of layered paint that Salt Wash gives. Now it was time to decoupage. I'm using the world map from JRV Decoupage Paper. Brand new paper line from Jamie Ray Vintage. 18 pound paper and each sheet is 30 by 20 inches. The first step was to cut the paper to size. An X-Acto knife probably would have been best, but I had a really sharp kitchen knife that I use. Next step to apply, I am using DIY Paint Liquid Patina in Crystal Clear Chandelier. This is the secret sauce for decoupage. The first thing you want to do is lay down a really good and thick base coat. Then carefully apply your paper and push it down firmly and apply another coat of Liquid Patina. Follow up with a few more coats after each dries to really get good coverage. After it was dry, I followed up with a little bit of clear and dark wax. The project is almost complete and now I am just adding this hardware to turn it into a coat rack. The hardware is from Amazon and I will put a link in the description box below. The hardware also doesn't come with black screws and they're kind of pricey so you can use regular screws and then just paint them with a little DIY paint. Remember that chalkboard I made? Here is the final tip so important before you write on it. You need to prime it. You do this by rubbing chalk all over the surface and then wiping it clean. That way future images will not stick on your chalkboard. 
The wax is dry on all my projects and so now the final step is time to buff. My favorite buffing tool is for my drill attachment. Works super fast and check out the results. purchase most of the products that you saw me using in this video, you can shop my online store at shoptheturnedleg.com or if you're local, you can shop my booth at Plaza Antiques and Collectibles Mall in Lincoln Park, Michigan. Three cupboard doors now I think look totally different. I created a sign, I created a coat rack, and a chalkboard. All with items that people were gonna throw away. I hope this helps you to look a little differently on those cupboard doors on the side of the road. Now, let's get ready for the big reveal, but before we do, I need to ask a favor. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a like and click the subscribe button. It really helps me to grow my channel, to continue to help others to salvage, repurpose, and create. Have I convinced you to carry your drill in your car just in case you see a cupboard on the side of the road? Let me know below with the comments. And also, if you have any more ideas on how to use cupboard doors, please put them in the comments below to help others.